One important question we can ask about two categorical variables is whether or not there is an association between them. In this video, we'll go over what is meant by an association between categorical variables, what it means for categorical variables to be independent, and how to determine these things with data and with charts, whether or not two variables are associated or if they're independent. So here are our terms. We say there's an association between two variables if knowing the value of one helps predict the value of the other. If knowing the value of one variable doesn't help predict the value of the other, then there isn't an association between them, and we call them independent variables. They are independent of each other. For example, in a school setting, somebody's age and favorite hobby are probably associated variables. A senior in high school is likely to have a different primary hobby from a first grader. On the other hand, grade level and sex are generally going to be independent. Knowing what grade someone is in would not help predict whether they're male or female. Now those are examples where we just know from our experience in the world whether the variables are likely associated or not, but it's not always that easy. How do we know just from the data whether or not not two categorical variables are associated. Well, we have to look at the contingency table for the distribution of the variables. Specifically, we need to look at the percents, so not the distribution of the frequencies, but rather the relative frequencies. If the distribution of one variable is the same for all categories of another variable, then the two variables are said to be independent. On the other hand, if this is not the case, if the distribution of one variable isn't the same for all categories of another variable, that would be evidence that they are not independent, that there is some association between them. Let's look at an example. So here we are again looking at data concerning the survival status of those aboard the Titanic and their ticket class. And we have the raw counts here, the frequency data, but we also have the percents. Specifically, we've calculated the percents for the conditional distributions of survival status across each of the four ticket classes. If you're just trying to determine if two categorical variables are associated, you can condition on either one. In this case, I've conditioned on the class variable, which is why each class adds up to 100%. But typically, we'll have a sense of which variable we think might explain the other. So I'm conditioning on class because I think it may be the case that somebody's class is going to help predict whether or not they survived. Now, why do we have to look at percents to accurately answer questions about association? Well, the raw counts can be deceiving. Just looking at this table, you can see that more crew members survived than first class members. But since we have the percents here, we can see that you were way less likely to survive if you were in the crew than if you were in the first class. So those raw counts, definitely deceiving. You gotta make sure you're calculating relative frequencies here. You also have to make sure you're calculating these percents contingent on a variable's value. So 212 is 24% of the crew. We're fixing the class variable to have the crew value to calculate that percent. So it's 212 over the total crew, which is A85. If we calculated these percentages by dividing by the total number of people, those percents would be no more helpful than these raw counts are. Instead, we see contingent on the fact you were in the third class, there was a 25.2% chance you survived. To calculate that number, we use 706 as the total. Contingent on the fact you're in the first class, there was a 37.5% chance you died. We use 325 as the total for that number. So that's a lot of clarifying commentary. Now let's ask, are the variables associated? Clearly, they are, because the distribution, the percents that we see of alive and dead, are not the same for all categories of the class variable. In the first class, we have 62.5% alive and 37.5% dead, whereas the percentages are drastically different for the crew class, and they're also quite different for the second and third classes as well. So in this case, we see those percents describing the distribution of alive and dead 
are not the same across all categories of the other variable. We could also use a side-by-side -side bar chart to visualize these differences. In the first class, we can see that a live rectangle is way higher than the alive rectangle for third class or for crew. And of course, both third class and crew have very large death rectangles. So yes, there are very clear differences in the distribution of survival status across the different categories of ticket class, and so this is strong evidence that there is an association between ticket class and survival status. The variables don't appear to be independent. Let's quickly run through one more example. A recent poll asked 500 men and women what their primary health concerns are. The data are shown in the following two-way table. So here we see our two-way table, and it just just has counts, so we're going to have to make sure to calculate percents before we start trying to make any conclusions. If we just looked at the counts, we might say, hey look, the counts for males and females look quite different, so gender and primary health concern must be associated. You can't do that though. A different number of males and females were polled, so of course the numbers here look different. It's the percents that are relevant and will give us an accurate interpretation of the evidence. So here is the conditional relative frequency distribution of primary health concerns for males and females. So I've conditioned on gender, for example, 272 divided by 502 is 54.2%. 70 divided by 347 is 20.2%. Now that we're looking at the percents, we can see very clearly that we do not have any evidence of an association. The variables primary health concern and sex appear to be independent. Knowing somebody's sex doesn't really help you predict what their primary health concern is. If I know someone was female, well, there's a 25.1% chance that mental health concerns were their primary concern. If I know someone was male, there's a very similar likelihood that mental health concerns were their primary concerns. Now, you might be thinking these percentages, 54.2 versus 54.8, 24.9 versus 25.1, these are different. So how do we decide how much is different enough to be evidence of an association? For now, I'll say we basically go off vibes. Later in this course, though, we'll go over some more detailed and sophisticated methods for quantifying the association or how likely it is that the variables are or are not associated. For now, hopefully you're comfortable saying, yeah, these don't look very different and yeah, these do look very different. Just as with the Titanic example, we might want to construct a side-by-side -side bar chart for this situation, again using relative frequencies, and this makes it very clear at a glance that the distributions of primary health concerns appear the same for males and females. We can also use a segmented bar chart for this situation. I'll leave a link in the description to my video introducing this type of chart if you're not familiar with it, but this also gives us an easy way to see that the distributions for males and females appear the same. This is basically like a pie chart, but in rectangle form. So that's what is meant by associated and independent categorical variables, and that's how to determine if two categorical variables are associated or not based on the data. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my statistics course and statistics exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in this course. Thanks for watching. Audio.